One of the things that I think is often overlooked with pocket watches manufactured before 1900 is whether the dial is hand painted or not. This transition happened in the middle of the 1880s and prior to that point dials were hand painted and it was a very tedious process. Uh, the watch factories would employ master dial painters and it was just a, a very lengthy process, very expensive process. And in the middle of the 1880s, uh, there were new methods that were developed. Uh, Elgin, the, the company in Elgin, Illinois, they developed a process that was a transfer process that was more mechanical. Um, and that allowed them to produce many dials with the same design. Uh, the Waltham Company up in Waltham, Massachusetts, they developed a, a photographic process uh, that worked with uh, exposing the dial surface with uh, certain chemicals and light and then uh, sprinkling enamel uh, powder and that would stick to the dial in certain places. So with the development of those uh, new processes, the watch companies were able to produce dials much quicker uh, much more cost-effective and um, it didn't really have the the uh, characteristics of a hand-painted dial. So today we're going to look at two pocket watches. Both were manufactured at the Elgin factory. This one is from around 1867 so it was really really early in the company's history. This one dates around 1890. So we're going to take a quick look at both of these and hopefully I can show you a few things to look for uh, and differentiate between a hand-painted dial and a dial that was uh, made using a transfer process. So the first one we'll take a look at is this one right here. So we're going to take a look under the microscope. So under magnification this becomes very apparent, the difference between these two. So you can see in this one, it says National Watch Company, which was the name of the company at the time. And you can tell that there's uh, variation differences between the different strokes and the serifs on the, the letters. So the first thing you want to take a look at is how, how it's signed. And you're looking for any indication that uh, it wasn't a, uh, a uniform process. The second thing to take a look at is the Roman numerals. So you can see here that the, the thinner lines in the Roman numerals are a little fainter and also the, the upper part of the Roman numeral and the lower part, they're fainter and you can see how in this particular line, it, it extends past the, the lower baseline. And so that indicates again uh, that it was some, some human factor to this that uh, is not perfect. And you'll see those little imperfections uh, in there. And then uh, the other thing to take a look at is the track, if there is one, the track going around the dial. You'll see the same sort of thing that there is a scribe mark and that was laid out first so that you would have a guideline around the dial and then the other parts the little indicators were added later again by hand the most accounts uh, from the factory say that this was a process that took several different people and each one would have a particular job. So the ones that were more unskilled would be the ones that would uh, lay it out, lay out the circles um, on a particular guideline and then uh, do the Roman numerals. And then it would go then to the master uh, dial painter who would do the lettering and the smaller the smaller numbers. So this particular dial, you can see in the seconds bit, that it has all these dots. And that is a style that was used by John Webb. And John Webb was 
um, a master dial painter. He worked at uh, Waltham and then he moved to the Elgin factory. And because these dots are present on this dial and it would, it, this particular watch dates to the time that John Webb would have been working at Elgin, I do believe that this dial, at least these details, were hand painted by John Webb. If it wasn't John Webb, it was uh, certainly someone that was supervised by John Webb and again, a, uh, a skilled dial painter. So that is the Elgin watch from 1867. Now we're going to take a look at this watch, which dates around 1890. And under magnification, you'll be able to see the differences. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the signing of the dial again. So on this one, you can tell that there is not as much variation. There's not as many imperfections. And that was one of the things that after these uh, transfer processes were developed, they were able to do uh, more uh, designs on the dial. And so you'll see designs that are a little bit more fancy, uh, like this, this uh, script on here instead of the serif. So the second thing that we looked at at the other dial is the Roman numerals. And the thin line and the baseline and the upper lines, they were all a little bit fainter and you could see some variation there. But on this particular dial, you see that it's all that same solid black, even though the line is thinner, it doesn't, it doesn't have that same characteristic of the variation. Same thing with the lines, this, the uh, circle going around the edge of the dial, not as much variation there. So we know that this one was done by the transfer process and it becomes even more evident when we take a closer look at some of these finer details. You can see that this, the, um, the digits here and the track going around the seconds bit is all very uniform and that is much different than, I'm going to swap these out, it's much different than what we see on this dial where you can tell that it is done by hand. So take a look at the signing on this one. Swap these out. Take a look at the signing on this one. So under magnification, these become very apparent which ones are hand painted and which ones aren't. The other thing that you'll notice is, and this one still has the, the ring track going around the perimeter of the dial, but that used to be done to lay everything out on the dial and have uh, a guideline for where all the uh, d different minute indicators and all that came. So once the transfer process came along and that was, you know, the entire design was impressed on the dial pretty much at the same time. So that became less and less of a feature that was necessary on the dial. So you see the ring track start to go around, uh, to, to go away around the time that um, the transfer process really became standardized, which was around 1890, which is in line with about when this watch was manufactured. So you see the ring track go away. You see dials that become a little bit more fancy with the way that they're signed. Uh, you see a lot of the script and then that moves into uh, different signings with uh, different uh, design embellishments and that sort of thing. So that gives you an overview. I hope to do a video that's a little bit more detailed, taking a look at a lot of different dials um, so that you can see uh, how the dials progressed over the different decades. But uh, this gives you a quick primer on what to look for when you're trying to differentiate between a hand-painted dial and a dial that was done by either a, a transfer process or photographic process. So if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.